Howdy. Let's take a look at cumulative cases now. So we can see the cumulative data, again, going all the way back to January 2020. Uh, and it's sort of come up in three waves, each one successively larger than the last one. So we could get this cumulative data right here um, and, you know, just tally it up or just keep track of it. You can zoom in and get sort of the more updated approach, um, but we already have the numbers. So this is where we left it, although our trend line is missing and we had these columns representing the date as a number. So let's delete those and let's delete this trend line that we cannot see. And Let's make some room for cumulative cases. So right here, what we can do is we can just calculate cumulative cases, right? So we need to know how many cases were on this day. I don't need January 1st, 1900. But we do need to know how many cases were on May 21st. So let's go back and have a look. Um, and I'm going to zoom out a bit. So here's May 1st. So May 21st is somewhere in here. I'll go on the yellow line. May 22nd, one more. May 21st, we had 29,999. So one under 30,000. So 29,999, so that's where I'm gonna start. And then the day after, so on the 22nd, I had an additional four cases, right? So that's going to bring me up to 30,004. Now, I don't wanna do this all the way down for, you know, uh, whatever we have, 113, 114 days. So here I can just say equals, and I'm gonna take the cell to the left, three, and I'm gonna add it to the previous day. So I just click here. And so 30,004 plus three gets 30,007. Now I can copy this formula, put my mouse over the bottom right hand corner, and that's gonna copy the formula inside. And so we see here seven plus six gets me to 13. And you can drag a few cells and it will keep that tally going. Or if you know that you're going right to the end of the range. So the end of the range, if I press control down, it finds the end of the range here. Okay, my last cumulative case is gonna go in this cell. So if I know I'm doing that, what I can do is I can just double click on this plus symbol here. And it should fill the entire thing and I can go down and have a look. Uh, and so as of yesterday, cumulative cases, 69,906. So I'll just have a check on the website to see what that looks like. So I'm going for the last data point. And I want cumulative cases. So it says 69,911. All right, so 69,911. And I'm within five here, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, one thing you notice is that uh, the daily cases here that I've used calculate my cumulative, these are all rounded to the nearest 10. Uh, all the ones bigger than a thousand are rounded to the nearest 10. I'm not sure why they did that, but whoever programmed the website made that decision. Uh, so our cumulative cases, you know, are going to be off by, uh, I guess, at most, um, in this case, five. So, you know, plus or minus five uh, each way. So I'm okay with that. Um, if you want the actual cumulative numbers down to that level of accuracy, uh, you could copy them from the site here or from a source such as our world and data, which we will be using um, in the very next part, I do believe. So for now, I'm not going to worry about that. In this column, I have the cumulative cases, and now I want to plot the cumulative ones. So let's start over and let's select, let's just select columns and see what happens. So I don't need these cells so I can delete them. 
and let's just select these two columns and go insert find a line chart that we like and we get a little preview and that looks perfect um, if we wanted to find a bar chart sorry not a histogram if we wanted to find a bar chart it would look like this um, but I like the line chart so let's go with that one uh, and line with markers I mean we have so many data points let's just let's just use a line. Uh, there's even a tip here, use it when there are many data points. Thank you very much, Microsoft. Okay, so I'll go with this. Let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, so cumulative cases. Now the point here that we're after is to be able to model the cumulative cases. So we want to be able to fit a mathematical equation to the model. And by doing that, it means that you can solve that equation for some date outside the data range. So in the future, you know, following the trend up this way, I could solve for how many cumulative cases I expect in October. And also going back in time, if I don't have the data in the past, I could go back and say, well, how many cases, you know, were there uh, at the beginning of, well, I guess um, it doesn't make sense for something like uh, virus data, uh, where we have data from the beginning. But uh, you get the idea, you could go back in time to before when we have observable data. And you could say, well, how many cases uh, likely were there um, before that? I mean, maybe, maybe if on one day you had like a thousand people pop up with uh, a positive test uh, and nobody before that, you could say, well, the day before there were less than a thousand uh, and something like this might help you. Let me get there. So I'm just going to right click on the data and say add trend line. I get my options that pop up here. Again, linear comes up as the default. I mean, uh, these days, I think Excel and Office is pretty smart, but they still do something like this. And you can see it obviously only covers maybe two out of our 100 and uh, over 100 data points. So it's a terrible model. So we don't want linear. Um, we could try something like polynomial. So why not? Let's put that on there. We can see it kind of captures the trend, right? Uh, we have kind of like a flattish bit down here, and then it starts to increase. But one of the main reasons why we don't want a polynomial here is because if I look at where the dashed line, so the model line, is here to begin with, the function output actually gets lower. So to begin with, it's you know predicting 35,000. And then uh, a month later, it's predicting uh, 28,000. So it actually reduces. Uh, and of course, this doesn't make sense with modeling data. Uh, so for cumulative cases, the cases can only add up. They can only increase. Um, you can't undo a case. Once somebody gets infected uh, and it's recorded, then that's it. Uh, there's no erasing of that data, although maybe that's a topic for uh, another, another video. Um, but essentially, you can only increase, right? So even though people can recover, again, that would be a different thing to model, recovery. Um, in terms of cumulative cases that only ever goes up. So you start with nobody, then the first person, and you know, if we end up keep tracking COVID data for many years to come, this cumulative cases is only ever gonna go up until I suppose it matches the population. Um, and so a polynomial is no good because of this uh, sort of um, mirrored behavior where you can have a decreasing and an increasing portion. So that's no good. Now, you may be tempted to order up the polynomial. Look at that, I went to order three and the match is a lot closer than it was for order two. And I can keep doing this and the fit looks like it's getting better. Let's make this more obvious. By doing something like, yeah, we'll just draw it on top for now. So as I, Start with the order two. Order one is just linear, uh, so we've already seen that one, so that was terrible. Order two may be better. Order three, even better it looks, but now we have this inflection point, which you'll recognize from a cubic function. Order four is back to an even degree, so it's also like a parabola where both arms go up. Uh, and five, and we're actually getting much, much closer here to what looks to be a perfect fit. 
So in the short term, this might actually be a good thing to do because if we don't step too far outside the bounds where we uh, can predict what's happening with the order six polynomial, this might be a good idea. I'm even tempted to display the equation to see what it looks like. And I mean, it looks like a nightmare, um, but there it is, right? It, there is an order, what was it? An order six polynomial. So you can see here the first coefficient uh, is almost zero x to the power six and then x to the power five and so on. Uh, and it does look like it matches the data very well. Um, the problem though with this is that for the longer tails, both in positive x and in negative x both ways, as we go out, uh, we cannot predict how this order six polynomial is going to look. Of course, you could you could graph it, but it's not necessarily going to continue in the trend of the data, which is that cases can only increase. Um, so any sort of uh, high order polynomial is going to have a lot of areas where you have local maximums and minimums, uh, and and that's not what we want here. So even though we've you know sort of sorted it out. This is probably a pretty good fit if we were interpolating data between the points or extrapolating to nearby windows, but farther out, uh, not to be recommended at all. Uh, we have a power function here as well. So notice that this one here says, I'll crank that up. Okay, so this says x to the power 262 as opposed to e, right? So the difference between power and exponential function. We can't see the model on there and uh, this data is not a good, um, not a good candidate for that type. So I'm gonna delete that um, and then I'm gonna say add trend line again. We also have moving average on here uh, and this is sort of something more to do with finance if you wanna take a couple steps uh, in advance and look at just the recent data, you can say, well, what's the moving average? So if you look at stock charts, uh, if you look at market charts, uh, you'll commonly see things like the 50 or the 100 day moving average. So it says, let's average the last 50 days uh, and then project that into the future and see um, where it looks like the range of uh, the market should be. So that's more of the finance thing. Okay, after that long segue, we'll stick with exponential and I wanna display the equation on the chart. So here it is. Let's make it readable. Uh, and blue, so I know what it is. Okay, so now It is an exponential function uh, and it doesn't look like a good fit at all, right? It looks like a terrible fit. So in the first part, we talked about this uh, and this has to do with the date being represented as a number in Excel and it uses those numbers to calculate this equation that we see. So we could actually plot this. This says three times 10 to the minus 110. Okay, so that's like 0.00000. .00000 for 110 of them, three. Um, so it's a very small number, but it's not quite zero. And then uh, e to the point 0059x. So let's just have a quick look at Desmos and see if we can do this. So y equals um, three times 10 to the minus 110. And then it was e to the 0059x. 59x. Okay, so we can plot this and we're looking at this blue line. Turn the contrast up. So we're looking at this blue line here. So we can plot this. Uh, it looks like a flat line coming through here. And that's because this number is so darn small, it's almost zero. Now I can't put a zero there, right? Let's just uh, put a zero there, put a zero there, and we have a flat line. Uh, anything, X is the input, so any day that you input in the future or the present to try to match 
the data is going to be zero when you're done. Uh, so, I mean, that would only fit if you're modeling a virus that doesn't exist, maybe. Uh, so, let's paste back in that one. Okay, and let's zoom out. And we can see here a trend in the exponential equation. So what happened was it came flat and then we can see this elbow and exponential functions have this property uh, where you're coming along, doesn't look like much is happening and then eventually there's this elbow and the exponential part kicks in and uh, the growth really takes off. And so that's what we see here after about 43,600. Now that, that number may seem familiar from part one when we were talking about uh, the days turning into dates. So what this is trying to model is mapping this into Excel. Day one here, the first one was January 1st, 20, no, January 1st, 1900. And then 43,000 days later, okay, we're into our present time. So that's what is happening uh, there. So obviously it's a, uh, it's a terrible model, but we don't know this unless we understand what's happening in, in the background. Uh, and then if we you know, go forward in time, we have, if we look you know, at uh, days 60,000, which I guess is a few years uh, into the future, um, you know, the, the supposed cases are off the charts, right? Um, and we could, you know, maybe zoom out and see if we ever get that far over. But um, so I just wanted to try to to try to graph that to see if we still had an exponential function, which we do, uh, and how it relates to our data. So it's not necessarily an error, but it's just because of the way that the data in Excel is represented. Now, what else can I do here? I can click the set intercept button because I know that my cases start at about 30,000 and it looks like that is uh, the early signs when only a few cases were popping up, right? So let's click this, set intercept 29999, press enter. And so now it's calculated the intercept and we, you can see it on the, uh, on the equation here. Uh, so 29999E and then we have four times 10 to the minus six. So that's like 0 0.000006 and then times X. So again, we could go look at that graph and decide, but we can see here that it's not a very good fit. So that's not helping with the intercept being on or it being off. So the way around this, um, let's see if we can change the axis type. So click on the axis click on options, click on text-based, and now we have a trend line I forgot about that's coming back up here. So this trend line was a power function. Let's delete that one. Click on this one, exponential, no intercept, with intercept. So it has changed, right? Because we changed the format to text Okay, and so Excel now picks it up, but we still have this problem with the intercept on, it starts well and it hits that first data point, but then the rest of it is not tracking well at all. So uh, all of these options are not a good idea to use. So what can we do here? Well, let's go back to Desmos and let's... Delete that one. And now let's graph this one, 29999. Remember that was our intercept, e to the 0037x. Okay, now I can't see it, so, so I have to zoom out. So what's happening here is that the exponential function is starting at this asymptote, x equals negative infinity, and it's coming in. And then at some point it has to kick up so that it can hit the intercept, which is 30,000 cases. So it does that. Where are we? Whoops. So it does that. 
and there should be right there is the intercept, okay? So in terms of the mathematics, again, this still works out. We have an exponential function here and we hit the intercept. That's what we asked it to do. But we know that this flat part in the model should be here in um, May and June. That should be the flat part as opposed to May and June would be positive as opposed to this uh, negative x component. So one thing we can do is shift our function. So if I have my green function here and I want to shift it, I can do plus, let's see, plus 10,000, right? And it shifts up. And if we want to compare that, you can see the shift here. So the original I was talking about is in purple and then the shift up as so. And really we want it to be shifted 29,999 because we want to start at 30,000 and then we want the growth to appear. So 30,000 cumulative cases. And then when the delta kicks in, we have a large amount of growth. So that is what I'm, I'm after here. So we can shift this around and modify the equation in Desmos pretty easily. Now I would take out this. Okay, and I would have something uh, close here to one. And I don't need this one, I can delete that one. Uh, so I've taken my intercept and I've now shifted the function like this. And that looks a little bit better where we have some flat around 30,000 activity. And then, and then sometime we start to have this growth. So that's kind of the behavior I'm after. So it's easy to manipulate in the graphing calculator, and it's not easy to manipulate, uh, not as easy to manipulate here in Excel. So what we can do is we can try to do this shift manually. So let's move this over. So for my cumulative cases here, what I really want to say is, well, let's have this one start at the beginning. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, uh, this cell should be the same as this one, but I'm going to subtract my initial condition. So 29999. Now I don't want it to be zero, so I'm going to say 29998 so that I start with one. So what I did was I take my value here, 30,004, I subtract my initial value, and I'm going to get five. So I can copy that formula, or sorry, I'm going to get six, and copy that formula and I can double click. And now this is cumulative cases real and this is cumulative cases uh, since, uh, and so we're starting a new tally here. So since May 21st, so something like that. Uh, and we can go look at the end of this and we can see that we have 39,908 cases since May and you know 39908 plus our initial 29999 gets us to 69906. All right, so 40,000 plus 30,000 gets us to 70,000. So that's okay. That makes sense. So now I want to plot this one with um, the date. These are the two columns I'm looking to plot. So let's modify my chart. I can double click here and I can say change chart type. I don't want that. I want to say select data. My series is called cumulative cases, but instead of column C, so instead of column C, I want column D. So I'm going to change these C's to D's. Say, okay. And the other one should not have changed for my x-axis, it's the same date labels. And I say, okay, and okay. And now let's look at my trend line. Look at my trend line, exponential, and now I still had set intercept ticked. So I want to take that off. 
and immediately we can see that we have a new equation here. Okay, so the new one, 32.016 is my coefficient out front, and that represents my intercept. We've seen that already. Uh, and then the exponential exponent is 0657x. Uh, now, when I look at it here, it doesn't look like the best fit, right? Because what's happening is it's a nice fit early on, but then at some point the growth has to kick in and it looks like it's kicking in a bit sooner than the data we see. So the dotted line is my model and that is growing a bit faster than the data itself. But we're getting closer here. So we've got 32 times e to the 0.0657x. Let's have a quick graph to see how that looks. Thirty-two point oh one six oh six five seven x, and it looks a bit funny, but it's probably because of my zoom. Okay, so according to this model, with it shifted, I've shifted the whole thing from thirty thousand down to zero. And my intercept now is 32. So I'm saying, well, we're starting about 32 cases. Uh, and then we're growing like this. And you can change this scale if you want to try to make it a little bit more visually appealing. So for x, we want to start at minus 1, and we're going to go up to 150 days, plus 150, and y, and we're going to go up to 4,000, So this one now, in blue here, uh, looks a little bit better. So we had this area. Remember, x is in days, so we had this flat area with not a lot of growth, okay? Then at some point, the rate of change starts to increase, and the growth really takes off. So the model is taking off a bit faster than the data. And so another thing we could do is we kind of need to either uh, take this curve and shift it a bit um, to the right, or we need to reduce uh, the convexity here so that it opens up a little bit more. So those are some of the things that we might want to consider uh, if we are doing some sort of analysis like this. Um, so I won't get into those details um, right now, but one thing you could do is shift the starting point, say here from May 21st, shift it to somewhere like uh, June 6th. If I look at June 6th, here it is. Um, and instead of starting out, um, instead of starting at either this one, one, you can start at 142, okay? And then have a look um, and see how that fits. So we might be including, you know, too much historical data just for this particular model. So in the next part, we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to put all this information on the same graph so that uh, you can see it all at once. And we're also going to look into forecasting. Uh, so being able to have Excel tell us how many cases to expect up and coming.